Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Dan here from Headwaters. And today we're gonna to be doing a skills clinic. We've done a lot of intro to paddling, a lot of beginner skills along the way throughout all of our videos. But today I wanted to take it up a notch. I wanted to kind of give you guys some next steps to work on in your evolution as a paddler. We're gonna be talking about bracing, we're gonna be talking about edging, and we're gonna be talking about really engaging our lower body to manipulate the kayak while our upper body focuses on becoming the paddle. So let's get into it. For this video today, I'm gonna to be using a touring style kayak with more of a keyhole cockpit. The idea with these skills is you really wanna be connected to the boat and the sit inside allows me to do that better. I also have hip pads, a nice backrest. I'm really connected, locked into this boat. So when my body maneuvers, it's telling the boat to do something. Now it's not to say you can't do these skills in any kayak that you already have because it's all still applicable. It's just easier if you're more connected to the boat. So the boat I'm paddling today is the Eddyline Sitka XT. This is the same boat that I took my ACA level three training class in. I like it because it's fairly roomy, easy to get in and out of, but it also allows me to really connect to the boat. I've got contact points on my feet with adjustable foot pedals. My knees tuck in here underneath the thigh braces. I scoop my seat forward in this boat so I get a lot of contact on my thighs. It's got hip pads here on the side so when I move my body, I'm connected to the boat telling it to do something. I've got a nice seat pad and backrest. This isn't necessarily to like lean up against, but it's there to help me engage good posture. I have this one all the way low and it's actually a little bit far back because I don't really need this for a ton of support. I'm gonna be sitting upright in my boat. Anyways, I just kind of wanted to give you guys an idea. Again, you don't have to have all this stuff in order to do the skills we're gonna work on today, but being connected to your boat and outfitting your boat to you makes it a lot easier. So for today's video, if you have a skag or a rudder on your boat, go ahead and put that skag up, flip that rudder up. We're gonna be working on just using our bodies to manipulate the boat. And with that, the first thing I want us to think about is using our paddler's box. We talked about that in our intro to paddling videos, that our arms, our chest, and our paddle make a box. So everything we do today is gonna to come from this box. It's from that box that we can generate the power to do these different strokes and really help our body engage to talk to the boat. I wanna talk a little bit about blade orientation to start because it's really gonna start mattering as we start doing more draw strokes or things where we're manipulating the paddle blade. It's gonna be important to know what side's your power face, what side's your back face, because I'll be referring to that throughout the video. So the power face is the scoop side of the paddle. This is the side that's facing you. We always want that power face orientated towards us. And then you have the back face. This is the back side of the paddle. We do stuff like reverse strokes, bracing strokes, we're using the back face. What you'll never see me do is turn the paddle in my hands to go backwards. I see this and this is like the number one no-no because it's only a matter of time before you're switching that around and you miss it and it goes underneath your boat and trip over your paddle. What I like to think about, I'm right-handed. I grip the paddle with my right hand and I like to think of my knuckles in line with the top of that paddle blade. And that position really never moves. So anything I'm doing in my paddler's box, whether it be high brace, low brace, draw stroke, is all from the same hand position. The next thing I wanna to talk to you about is edging your kayak. So kayaks have primary stability, that means how the boat is stable sitting flat, and then most kayaks will have a secondary stability, especially as you get into more touring oriented kayaks, where as you shift the boat, it wants to kind of lock in on a secondary edge. So we can wobble the boat back and forth, feel out those secondary edges. I suggest doing that in some nice shallow water. You can have your paddle flipped up in a low brace position, so worst case, you can always just push off the bottom. There's a difference between edging your kayak and leaning your kayak, and it's important to know that because during some of the moves today, we'll actually be leaning over into our kayak, and other moves will just be edging the kayak. When I'm edging my kayak, my center of gravity stays over my belly button, stays over the center of the kayak. So edging my kayak looks like this. My body sort of makes a C. I'm picking up with my knee. I'm thinking about dropping my other leg or dropping my hip down in the water. This is edging. So when we're talking about doing an edge turn, this is what we're looking at. Now, if we're talking about uh, leaning our kayak, maybe for a bracing edge turn or something like that, that's actually leaning our whole body. And basically you can lean to a certain place, your body goes with the boat, but it's, at some point, if you don't brace or do something to support yourself in the water, you're gonna go over. So again, edging, nose stays centered. You can get that kayak way up on edge, leaning, goes to a certain point, and then the boat's gonna go over. So since we're here, let's go ahead and talk about bracing for our first thing. 
since we're in nice shallow water and if we brace and go over, we're not actually gonna flip our kayak over. A bracing stroke looks something like this. A low brace is when you're using the back face of your paddle to push against the water to support yourself. A high brace is when you're using the power face of your paddle and it typically is more of an extreme lean to brace yourself. For today's video, we're mostly gonna be talking about low brace positions, just because that's what most people are gonna be doing the majority of the time. Really, the only time you're gonna be using a high brace is if you were in, I don't know, a whitewater situation or maybe you were uh, bracing up for a roll. But for the most part, we're gonna be low bracing. High braces tend to put your shoulders in a little bit more vulnerable positions. And for this video, we're gonna stay away from that. So what does a low brace look like? Basically, a low brace looks like I'm putting the paddle out to the side and I'm gonna push down on the water for that momentary support while I get my nose back over my center. So again, I'm gonna lean over, push down on the water, and I actually think about dropping my head towards the paddle and sweeping it back over center. Again, I put my weight on the paddle, center myself back up. This is a really handy thing, say a wave's coming by, you're not sure what to do, you can be in a bracing position, you can always just push off the water. And that's how I'd recommend starting, just by little, little baby backstrokes. Think about dropping your head towards the water, I'm using my knee here to pick the boat up as I brace. Watch, I go over, push down against the water. I'm picking up that knee, bringing my head towards the center. A lot of it's what our upper body's doing. The paddle blade's just having a moment of support while we get ourselves back over center. If our blade was flat, it's gonna wanna sink down in the water. It's gonna provide no support. So we really wanna think about having our elbows up, blade flat on the water, pushing down for support. I like to think about rolling my wrist forward as I, as I brace just because that helps the paddle climb through the water and provide even more support. So I'm pushing down and kind of sweeping it forward throughout the stroke. So I'm gonna to touch a little bit on the high brace just because it's a good transition into other things like draw strokes. So the high brace works just like the low brace, but you're using the power face of the blade to support yourself. So as the kayak goes over, reaching out, and I'm pulling the paddle back towards me. Again, low brace, high brace pulling it back towards me. And the reason I like to talk about that stroke is because it actually puts you in the exact position you need to be in for doing things like a sculling draw. It gets you in the habit of rolling that paddle back in your hand without changing the hand position of your paddle. All right, so low brace, elbows up. High brace, elbows down. That way when you hear me talk about a low brace or a high brace position, you automatically know where your paddle needs to be. Okay, let's start with just some absolute basic stuff. Like I want my kayak to go that way. So we're gonna start with the draw stroke. There's two ways to do the draw stroke. You can take your paddle, reach out to the side here. Again, I'm rotating with my body because I wanna face my work. And I'm gonna pull that paddle back towards me. When I get close to the boat, I'm gonna make a T and go back out. So I'm gonna use that power face, pull the paddle towards me, make a T, slice it out. If you don't do that, if you just keep pulling, your paddle's gonna hit your boat and you're gonna feel like you're gonna trip over. If you don't turn that paddle 90 degrees, you're gonna push against that paddle and it's gonna make you wanna tip over. So it's really important as you're doing this stroke, pull towards you, turn your paddle 90 degrees, and then slice back away. And that's gonna make you go sideways. So if you need to pull up and talk to a friend, you can use this draw stroke. The other way to move sideways is called a sculling draw. Same sort of a concept where you're using the power face of your blade, facing your work, but I'm sculling through the water. I like to think of this stroke like I'm spreading peanut butter, slicing the paddle forward through the water, slicing the paddle backwards, but I'm only engaging the power face of my paddle. I'm never engaging the back face. The power face is the only thing touching the water. Nice vertical stroke, facing my work, like spreading peanut butter on, a, on bread. The power face is always climbing through the water, and because it's climbing, it's gonna move me along with it. Now, if I don't turn the power face, if I accidentally get to the back face, what you're gonna notice is that paddle's gonna wanna dive through the water. So I always wanna have that support of the oncoming water. Again, try this somewhere shallow where you're not gonna flip your boat over, where you can just feel the water. Also, you'll notice that boats have a keel on them, right? So the boat's kind of a V bottom and a keel. If I face my work and lean my kayak towards the paddle, a couple things happen. One, I'm relying a lot on my paddle blade for support, but two, I'm taking this edge of the boat and I'm like digging it down into the water. So what I like to think about is dropping the opposite hip. So if I'm gonna do a sculling draw or a draw stroke on my left, I'm gonna actually drop my right hip. So now when I scull, the water coming under the boat's not hitting that shine, it's sliding under the boat. 
allowing it to move sideways with a lot less effort. Let's try it here. All right, come on back. I personally like that sculling draw. It just feels really nice. And if you get in the rhythm, you can really uh, make the boat go wherever you want. So basically I like to think of my kayak as four quadrants, split down the center and along the side. If my paddle is directly along the side, I'm gonna move sideways. If my paddle's up into the front, I'm gonna move this front quadrant. If I'm drawing towards the back, it's gonna move that back quadrant. So wherever my paddle is at in relationship to these quadrants is how it's gonna move the boat, either towards the paddle or away from the paddle. So that same draw stroke we learned we can do in different positions along our boat. If we do the draw stroke like we've been doing right at our side, that's gonna move us sideways, okay? If we do that same draw towards our bow, it's gonna bring our bow towards the paddle. If we do that draw stroke towards our stern, it's gonna bring the stern towards the paddle. What I want you guys to start thinking about as we progress here is that all this paddle blade is doing is holding onto a piece of water so you can then manipulate the boat. And you'll really feel that if you're on land doing this, if you're just sitting there with the paddle in your hand on carpet or on the grass and you rotate and you put that paddle in the grass and then you pivot, what you'll notice is the paddle blade doesn't really move. Our lower body is becoming the boat and our lower body is actually doing the majority of the work to drive and maneuver the kayak. So the first way I like to apply some of these skills is to do an inside edge turn. And what that means is we're gonna be doing a low brace on the inside of our kayak, leaning towards the paddle and doing a little bit of an edge turn. This is a pretty standard thing most of us are doing. Most of us know to just like back sweep to stop. The only difference here is we're actually gonna stay squared up to our paddle we're gonna lean on it for a little bit of support. We're gonna use that back face at a nice climbing angle and just press away. What we're also thinking about doing is taking our knees and pulling them towards the paddle. As you do this, kind of like a pry together, what you'll notice is that your knee is actually pulling the boat towards the paddle. It's not so much your paddle pulling towards your knee. Does that make sense? Remember the paddle's just trying to anchor. We're trying to think about what is our lower body doing to drive the kayak where we wanna go. Let's try that one again. Okay, I'm paddling towards you. I'm gonna rotate, look where I wanna go, push the paddle in the water, and then think about bringing that knee towards the paddle. As I slow down and stop, I'm gonna lose support on that paddle, so I need to bring myself back to center. But as I'm going, you find I can put a ton of pressure on that paddle. As long as I've got momentum going forward, that paddle's gonna be creating lift, just like an airplane wing, right? If I create lift, that water's gonna hit that paddle and wanna climb up out of the water. So that's where we're getting our support. So that's what we call an inside edge turn. Typically you're gonna do an inside edge turn when you're trying to stop quickly or maybe you need to make a move or maybe you don't wanna hit your friend, you can brace and turn away. But the only problem with the inside edge turn is it kills all your speed and your momentum. A lot of times we wanna turn the boat but we wanna keep going somewhere and that's where the outside edge turn comes into play. An outside edge turn looks like this. I'm gonna be edging as opposed to leaning, right? So my center of gravity stays over my belly button and I'm going to be doing a sweep stroke. Remember from the first video, our sweep stroke, we put it in here at the toe and we sweep our way all the way towards the stern, keeping our paddler's box intact. But now what I want you to think about in this video is really driving through that foot, okay? So again, the paddle's holding onto a piece of water and I'm gonna take this left foot here and I'm gonna think about driving the kayak away from the paddle. As I straighten my leg out and push the kayak away, there's gonna be a natural lean to the boat. You're leaning away from the turn. That's why it's called an outside edge turn. Same principle applies. You're not digging that keel and you're allowing the boat's keel to kind of slide across the surface of the water. Let's see if I can demonstrate here. Really driving that foot. And if you don't feel fully comfortable on the edge, check this out. You can actually follow up with that low brace. Yeah, so as you're learning and you're progressing, you can do your sweep stroke on your outside edge, roll your paddle forward and have a nice low brace for support. So now you're always being supported throughout the stroke. This is a great stroke when I'm trying to keep my speed up and I wanna turn but keep my rhythm. I don't wanna just paddle twice on the left side to get my boat to come around. No, I wanna be able to edge, drive the boat through my hips and get going where I wanna go. So I can keep paddling, keep my cadence up. Basically I'm using my hips to help steer and drive the boat. Now let's say I wanna turn my boat 360. These are long boats and they can take a little while to get turned if you don't know what you're doing. So 
I want you to look like a pro out there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna combine those two strokes we just learned, the inside edge turn and the outside edge turn. If we do them in sync back to back, we should be able to turn this kayak in a 360 right in place. So we're gonna go ahead and start with our reverse sweep stroke, winding up towards the stern, putting the paddle in the water, thinking about bringing my knees to the paddle, and then switch it up with a reverse sweep stroke, pushing the boat away from the paddle, reverse sweep, forward sweep, Again, using my edges to shorten the boat's water line, using my lower body to drive the boat, using my rotation to really anchor and catch the paddle blade. At the end of this, what I want you to start feeling is you no longer have hands. Your hands are the paddle blades. So when you think about reaching out and grabbing some water, this is your hand grabbing the water. You no longer have legs, you are a kayak. You've become a kayak. Your knees, your hips, your butt, your feet are all connected and talking to the boat so you can drive and steer it. And you're not just paddling, you're becoming a kayak. Okay, I hope I haven't lost you guys yet. We've covered a lot of ground, but I really want to get to this next skill because I think it's the most fun and enjoyable and it's draw strokes and ruddering strokes. This is where you really get your paddle to be your flippers in the water. You can get this boat to do whatever you want it to do. Let's just start with a ruddering stroke. I want you to kind of think about this concept of your paddle blade being the rudder of a ship. So if it's towards the stern of the boat, this is a ruddering stroke, okay? Think about that paddle going into the water, and if I push that paddle out, that's gonna make my boat turn to the left. If I pull it in, it's gonna draw the stern of my boat and make my boat go to the right. So you have a lot of control. You'll see those guys surfing, and you'll see them kind of like this in the water. That's so they can manipulate their boat left and right just by rotating their wrists. So what I'm gonna do now is just paddle right towards you, keep my paddle in the water, and I wanna play with that. I wanna show you as I open this up, the stern's gonna to draw towards the paddle. As I push it away, the stern's gonna push away from the paddle. So super helpful skill if you find yourself surfing downwind, you can catch little rides, and you can really control that boat just by opening up the face. See how the stern's gonna to draw towards the paddle? Closing the face, stern's gonna go away from the paddle. So if you're trying to get that boat to come back on track, you can put that paddle in there. And it's just like our low brace stroke, but a little bit more vertical and you can really rotate it to get it to go left and right. So play with that one. It's really great if you have any downwind conditions that's blowing from the back, because that's when a kayak wants to do what we call weathercock, like the boat wants to go sideways. You can really control a lot of that weathercocking just by those ruddering strokes. Now, if we move that same sort of stroke from our stern up to our bow, now we have what we call a bow rudder. This is the, one of the most challenging strokes for people to get because it is sort of an awkward position, but it works out really well. What I want you to think about is starting in your high brace position, and then we're gonna to go to like our draw stroke. Remember when we were doing this and we were sculling? So take our draw stroke where our boat or paddle is parallel with our keel, parallel with our kayak, and then we're just gonna move it forward and then open it up to the oncoming water just slightly. See how my wrists are rotated back? They're not rotated forward. That's gonna make our boat wanna stop or the paddle go underneath our bow. We want that paddle face to be opened up to the oncoming water. Coming in. I'm gonna go from here, rotate that paddle forward, lean into it. The more I rotate, the more the boat edges, the more powerful that stroke can become. This is a great stroke when you're just trying to keep your speed but redirect your course a little bit. I'm doing the same thing with my lower body, just like we were doing an outside edge turn. My right knee is picked up, my left knee or my left leg is pushing through the foot pedal, allowing that hole to slip across the water. Nice and then I can just pull that into a nice forward stroke. So we've covered a lot of ground, touched on a lot of little things. Hopefully I went into enough detail that you guys can kind of start wrapping your head around it, kind of start playing with this stuff on your own. I know you're gonna have questions. I want you to leave those in the comments below, but I want you to just come out and play with this stuff. I want you to get to a point where your paddle is kind of disappears and you're feeling the water with your paddle blade as opposed to concentrating on it. So the more you practice, the more you play with the stuff, the easier it will become. The more natural you'll find you can tilt and edge your boat and really find to get familiar with that secondary stability. You'll also find that as you maneuver your paddle through the water, you'll find lots of support from your paddle blade without really having to think about it too much. It's more of a feel thing. I think that's gonna do it for me today, you guys. We're gonna go for a little paddle and just enjoy this beautiful day. If you have any questions though, leave those in the comments below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next one. This is Dan wishing you happy paddling.